Thank you very much. It's such an honor to be here with the class of 2023. Uh, your president, my friend Julie, called me and she said, Greg, do you believe in free speech? And I said, yes. And she said, good, you're giving one on June 17th. <laughs> and I'm eternally grateful. Uh, anytime I stand in front of a microphone, I always think of this homie named Lewis, who's a big guy, a lot of tattoos, and he was giving me tips on how to speak publicly. And he said, look, you got to pepper your talk with self-defecating humor. <laughs> and I said, yeah, no shit. That's uh, <laughs> some good advice there. You know, I know that I, I, you know, I've spoken many times in Santa Clara. Maybe you've heard me one place or another. So I apologize if I repeat anything. You know, it happens. I was invited to speak to a gathering of foster grandparents in Orange County. Uh, one summer and uh, their big gathering. Well, I had spoken at it the summer before and for some reason they invited me back in. And uh, after the second talk I gave, this foster grandmother came up to me and she had big tears in her eyes. So I think she liked the talk and she grabbed both my hands and, and she said, I heard you last year. And she gets kind of verklempt. It never gets better. So kind of hoping she misspoke there, but <laughs> see what I did? That was some self-defecation. Anyway, here's the deal. Uh, what Martin Luther King says about uh, church could well be said of your time here at Santa Clara. It's not the place you've come to, it's the place you go from. And you go from here to be in the world who God is, compassionate, loving, and kind. You go from here to imagine a circle of compassion, and then you imagine nobody standing outside that circle. And you go from here to discover your true self in loving, and so you allow love to live through you because love never stops loving. And it will get you to the next place from here. You know, I driving, uh, here yesterday, the homies have set up my iPhone, you know, the GPS voice, and they gave me this really nice Irish lady. Um, in fact, when I arrived yesterday, she said, turn into the car park, you know, so sometimes I need translation, but uh, so I was on the freeway and, and she said, accident ahead. And then you wait and you're breathless and there's a pause and there's a beat and then she says, you're still on the fastest route. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I'm comforted by that. I'm kind of consoled by that. I, I'm not certain that it's the quickest route, but I know it's the surest route and that it'll get me to Santa Clara. Love, you're still on the fastest route. And so you go to the margins because that's where the place you need to stand in order to erase them. And you go to the margins and you love the poor and the powerless and the voiceless and you allow your hearts to be altered by them. And you go to the margins and you cherish those whose burdens are more than they can bear and those whose dignity has been denied. And you go to the margins to be tender with the easily despised and the readily left out, you go to the margins to stand firmly with the demonized so that the demonizing will stop and to stand with the disposable so that the day will come when we stop throwing people away. And you go to the margins with love and you discover that loving is your home. And once you discover that, you will never be homesick. The poet Rumi writes, if the house of the world is dark, then love will find a way to make windows. And windows are those transparent things through which we see mystically, through which we see as God sees from the confines of those places where we get stuck and are annoyed and impatient and want to win the argument. 
as was kindly mentioned in the introduction, Homeboy Industries has been around for 35 years. We have uh, 13 justice enterprises, a bakery, lots of restaurants, a, a electronic recycling plant. And Homeboy Silkscreen, which has been around for 30 years, hundreds and hundreds of rival enemy gang members have worked side by side there, uh, printing thousands, millions, millions of shirts for high schools and universities and family reunions. Homeboy Silkscreen uh, is reasonably priced. We do uh, high quality work. We UPS to Santa Clara. I'm just saying. <laughs> so one day I get a text from the guy who runs the place, Ruben, and, uh, and he rarely texts me, but he does. He goes, I'm sending Gilbert to you, which can't be good. And Gilbert's a cabezón, a, a homie. Uh, they call him Trippy. 20 minutes later, he's sitting in my office, and I said, what happened? He said, well, supposedly I stole some T-shirts. I said, did you? And he said, yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly stealing. I mean, it was three t-shirts. There were thousands of them. I said, okay, let me see if I get this right. So I need a car. I want a car. I go to a car lot. There are a thousand cars. <laughs> I take one car. I mean, it's not really stealing. There's a bunch of them. And he looks at me and he says, Exactly. <laughs> so we stare at each other for a beat, and then we just fall out of our chairs howling with laughter, because I don't know what else you're supposed to do, what you can do. And love will find a way to make windows where you see beyond the places where you're stuck, where you want to win the argument, the places from which you seek to divide when Jesus says that you may be one, that please create a community of beloved belonging. I remember years ago, I, I met a homie named Danny, and he was 13 years old, and uh, I knew him in the projects. I knew him in this alley where he would kick it with his homies. He always had a gun tucked into the front of his pants and always made sure that I knew that he did. He made a solemn vow that he would never step foot in Homeboy Industries. And then I knew him further in detention facilities, juvenile hall, probation camp. Finally, he went to prison at 18. And he did two years. And in gang recovery, they say it takes what it takes, the birth of a son, the death of a friend, a long stretch in prison. But for Danny, he got out of prison to discover that his mother had six months to live, she had pancreatic cancer. And he had a lot of siblings, but he was the lone care, hospice caregiver. And I watched how tender he was with her and knowing that she had not been tender with him. Torture, violence, neglect, and yet he was tender and only the soul that ventilates the world with tenderness has any chance of changing the world. And uh, a week later, she died. And then a week after that, I buried her. And a week after that, he walked into Homeboy for the first time. And I watched him work side by side with rivals, enemies, guys he used to shoot at. And he inhabited the truth of who he was and he discovered, as George Saunders says, that the only non-delusional response to everything is kindness. So one day he comes into my office and he begins by saying, what happened to me yesterday has never happened to me in my life. And he proceeds to say that after work, he gets on the gold line across the street from our headquarters in Chinatown. He's heading east to go home. He says that the train is full, but he's managed to get a seat. And, and standing right in front of him, holding on to the pole, he says, is a medio pedo guy, a guy who's a little bit drunk. He goes, he's a homie, because I see tattoos. I don't know who he is. He's an older vato. 
And Danny is wearing a sweatshirt that says, Homeboy Industries, Jobs Not Jails. And the little bit drunk guy sees it and he goes, hey, you work there. And Danny doesn't know whether to engage him fully, so he just nods. And the guy says, is it any good? And Danny shrugs and he says, it's helped me. In fact, I don't think I'll go back to prison because of this place. And then he tells me that he stands up and he fishes into his pocket and retrieves a little piece of paper and a pen, and he carefully writes the address of Homeboy Industries on the piece of paper. And as he's telling me, he says, I couldn't believe I knew the address by heart. <laughs> and he hands it to the guy, and the guy takes it. And Danny says, come see us. We'll help you. And the guy looks at him in the eye and he says, thank you. And the train stops and the guy gets off. And Danny sits down and now he returns to that earlier refrain, what happened to me next has never happened to me in my life. Everyone on the train was staring at me. Everyone on the train was nodding at me. Everyone on the train was smiling at me. And now he can barely speak. And for the first time in my life, I felt admired. And all we could do was weep because I don't know what else you can do. We go from Santa Clara to be in the world who God is, compassionate, loving, kind. We know that systems change when people change and people change when they are cherished. Santa Clara is not the place you've come to. It was always going to be the place you go from. And you go from here to decide at the margins that the only soul that is tender in the world has the capacity to alter the world. And love, and loving being loving, and knowing that loving is your home, you're still on the fastest route. And love will always find a way to make windows, and so will you. Congratulations and God bless you, class of 2023.